Okay, the next player, what are you doing, Pete? Yeah, just uh, just working basically what we used to call the double hip, and just changing the uh, the pivot point from the centre, which is like the old uh, old hinge, like um, you know a swivel door to a to a proper hinge on the front here, where you're taking the weight into the into the pad. So what you're doing is really moving body weight into it. Most self-defence situations, this is the best you get. It's sort of social stance, really. You know, you're never in a formal karate stance when somebody comes up and starts having a ruck with you. So basically, this is the best you've got. And from this position here, which is usually 18 inches, with a bit of disguise, a bit of chap moving the hands around, you've got to get some nice impact into it. But knocking people out is always what we call a fine motor skill. It takes a lot of targeting, it takes a lot of accuracy, and really uh, a lot of control to be able to knock somebody out. Uh, for me, it's always been slaps, and that's a combination of, of like using a double hip and the Chinese heavy hand. So what we do with the pad is put somebody this way here, and then we just turn them side off that way. And then from there, we just took the hands in the belt to make it difficult, and then just get the hip, and then just get these things. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> just a sorry. Chinese heavy hand. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> you can sorry, that. sorry, Larry. It's all right, mate. Good shot. diverting your attention and yet you know you've got somebody coming up to blindside you this way. The problem is if I turn and look at him, this guy goes, if I go for him, this guy's going to go. So basically what we're going to do is be able to take this guy out and it's just a reverse palm, I'm just using the back of the hand. So I'm going to bring it down here, across the brachial plexus here, even across the chest. It's a combination of just really thinking that your hand, just put on your hand is like 50 pound in weight and then all you're going to do is just use the hips to bring it down. I'll just build it up easy. Start to build it. Elbow we do. Basically you put your elbow out and you want to basically you want to hit somebody at that 90 degree point. If you put a focus where the elbow's gonna hit, it hits here. It doesn't actually hit again. What you're gonna do is usually come around and scuff. So ideally what you're going to be is in a different channel to do elbow. Most times if you're doing elbow as well, you're going to be close in. Elbow, elbow is one of those techniques. If you're looking at ranges and tools, you're pushing with head, elbow, knee, okay, or body shots uh, before you get to like vertical grappling. So elbow is going to be close. And, and again, we're going to use the double hip system, which is just allowing you just to use your body weight here, below. So not the top of your body but you're using the bottom of your body weight, which is your double hip here. And you can do this even because you're using your hips and not distance. You can do it just touching. Yes. So you can do it just touching the pad. It's done below. Okay, sometimes what we do, obviously if I'm standing in front of the guy and we need to, I need to change from here so this position here and in here, I could have altered these guys doing it. And to do this, we'll use a slap, which will just be a bit of a rake down the side of the face, this way in a turn. And I'll slap this way from here. So we slap to here, sorry Bob. And then this way allows me to drag my hip up and then I get the nice double hit coming this way. Okay. But just put a few more. I'm teaching the police a lot these days, doing a lot of police teaching. And for smaller and lighter officers, female officers, what they're able to do by using the double hip and changing the door hinge, they're able to put the six, seven, eight stone in any of these techniques that we're doing, whether it's knees, elbows, slaps, or punches. And this way, you're able to get this, even with a couple of extra steps off Bob there, you're still able to get some nice impacts up there. Okay, as I say, even just touching the pad here. So it might be that, you know, when you're touching somebody in the street, even as a doorman, you're trying to move somebody out, you feel them pull against you as they do this way, and that brings the, them onto you at the same time. So just touching the pad. You don't have to be far away from it. You can be close, providing your hips <laughs> do the work here. Other one is a head and shoulder shot, which is basically just a combination. You're just moving the door hinge now, and the door hinge moves, a bit of a diamond shape. Door hinge moves from this side now. So as I step into here, I step in square, and what I'm going to do, maybe slap the hands down first of all, because what I'm not going to get into is a fight with somebody who's probably a better fighter than I am. 
Most martial artists are good fighters. I'm just better at being preemptive. So when I see somebody's hands cut, I'll slap the hands down and I want to close. I don't want to let them get back out and start using the hands. So from this position here, I'm going to go in with a door hinge. I'm going to drop this shoulder and let my head come down onto the pad. And from this position here, <coughs> is this way. Okay. And that will create some distance. I usually use it a combination, so when I hit from here, <coughs> this way, it'll expose this leg here no, for these big, big lower leg. And again, I'll use the hip for that. So I'm using the power of the hip, not just the strength in the muscles. So I'm going to slap the hands down here, <coughs> hit to this. Then we're going to come in here to take this out. And then maybe <coughs> just finish off with this one elbow with the hip again. Your normal punch is just in a sort of social stance. So we're just standing nice and relaxed. And all I'm doing, instead of the traditional system of boxing or punching, instead of turning the hip at the same time, you know, which if you think about like throwing a javelin, just wouldn't work. Think of throwing a stone or shot put. You've always got a push with a hip, first of all, which creates the recoil here. So there's no other sport. You look at a goal stroke, it doesn't come back and forward. It comes backwards, then goes forward, recoils here and takes the body weight into the ballistic technique. Same with punching, what I'm going to do is work a double hip and I'm also going to change the emphasis of the hinge from being the sensor which starts at your head and goes out your backside. So that if I punch like this in a traditional way, if I've got X power coming this way, I must have X going back this way. It's the only, phys physics wise, it's the only answer to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a double hip, which would be more like throwing a stone, and I'm going to move the hinge to here. That allows me to take my weight here, the next one I'm going to rotate my weight round on it. And that from here, just nice and relaxed, just here, nice and relaxed, here, and these are just easy, easy punches, but it's effortless to here. Okay. You could do them all day, couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Nearly could do them all day. Okay. Right. Bob's moving the pad, which is... I'm not, he's hurting, actually. <laughs> he's honestly. moving the pad, which always bothers me. I'll try and stand it. still. Okay, mate. I'll just do it just slowly, so you just see the effort. <clears throat> These are just... That would take somebody out? Yeah. In the stomach? Yeah. And it's... <clears throat> you start off for ten, really. Yeah. And from this point here, <clears throat> you notice I'll leave the fist on. I'm not going to bring the fist back, because yeah. if I want to do another technique, why bring it back here? I'm going to hit this point, and that's where I'll leave my hand on here. So if I want to put elbow, I can put elbow in from the punch. I'm not going to bring it back and put elbow in, it's a waste of time. I mean, even if it winded the stomach, if it missed the stomach, it'd break the sternum. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Bob.